Hi everyone, um, today we are going to learn about maximization transportation problem using Northwest Corner Rule to determine the initial solution. And then we are going to test if that initial solution is the optimal solution or the best solution using the stepping stone path method. By the way, for this kind of transportation problem, it is uh, very similar to minimization. However, since the problem is maximization, we need to convert that first to minimization problem by subtracting all the profits from the highest profit in the matrix. For example, we have a company has three factories located in three, three, in three cities via X, Y, and Z. This factory supplies consignments to four dealers, A, B, C, and D. The dealers are spread all over the country. The production capacity of these factories is 310, 100, and 290 units per month, respectively. The net return per unit product is given in the following table. So we have factory X, Y, and Z. We have dealers A, B, C, D as a column. And then we have the capacity of each factories right here at the last column. And on the bottom row, we have the demand or the requirement of each dealers. So for, the, for A dealer, their demand for this particular um, factory or a dealer is 150 units per month. For um, for dealer B, the demand is 130 unit. For uh, dealer C, the demand is 120 unit. And for dealer D, the demand is 300 units. The number is right here, uh, six six um, in the in the you know, in the middle. These are the the profit um, per unit whenever a factory X would deliver to uh, dealer A. That means that every unit or every unit delivered uh, from X, from factory X to dealer A, uh, it would have um, a $6 profit. And for factory Y to A, the profit or the net return per unit would be $4 uh, dollar and, and so on and so forth for the rest of the factories to dealers. So the problem right here is how can we uh, allocate this unit so that we can uh, maximize the total return? So that is the goal of this particular problem. The first thing that we need to do uh, in solving maximization um, transportation problem is we need to determine the highest unit cost found in the table. So from this table, um, you can see it's very it's very obvious that the, the highest unit cost is found in factory Z, uh, dealer D. So that would be eight. What we're going to do right here is we're going to sub track each unit cost from the highest unit cost. For example, in cell AX, uh, this will become 2 since 8 minus 6 equals 2. And we're going to, we're going to do the rest on the next um, slide. So this one right here, so 8, uh, eight minus 6 is 2, 8 minus 6 is 2, 8 minus 4 is 4, uh, 8 minus 2 is 6. 8 minus 5 is 3, 8 minus 7 is 1, and 8 minus 8 is 0. So the one in yellows are the new um, are the new numbers or the new unit costs in the matrix. The rest uh, in the matrix will still uh, stay the same, the demand and the capacity. Only the unit cost in the matrix will change. And by the way, uh, we can see that this is also a balanced transportation problem. If you still remember, balanced transportation problem, meaning um, the total demand is equal to the total capacity. So the total demand is 700. That's 150 plus 130 plus 120 plus 300. So that's 700 for the demand. 
And then the total capacity is also 700. That's 310 plus 100 plus 290. So this is a balanced transportation problem. So we don't need to change anything or we don't need to add a dummy demand or a dummy, uh, cap dummy factory or dummy dealers in this case. So next, now that we have converted it to a minimization problem, we can now proceed to solving the optimal use solution using the usual method, which is the NWCR, which is the Northwest Corner Rule. So to, uh, if you still remember how to do the Northwest Corner Rule, we would start from the Northwest literally itself. So we are going to exhaust all the unit right in the northwest um, cell, which is in the AX cell. Since the demand is 150 and the capacity is 310, that means we are going to put here 150 since that is the demand for this particular uh, dealer. So right now, um, 310 minus 150, we still have 160 remaining um, capacity for factory X. So we are going to uh, give that or deliver that to the uh, dealer B. Um, since the demand for dealer B is 130, so we will put in 130 right here. So right now we have exhausted uh, 280 units already. So the remaining capacity for factory X would be 40 units and we're going to put that in um, dealer C, or so rather 30 units remaining. So we have already exhausted capacity for factory X. Now let's move on to the capacity of factory Y. Since um, dealer A and dealer B has been, uh, the demand has been met, we don't need to put in units here in this particular cell because again the demand has been met now we can move forward to dealer c since um that there is already 30 units for this particular dealer the remaining uh requirement for dealer c would be 90 and we will put that there 90. since factory y the capacity of factory y is 100 meaning there is a remaining 10 units. And we're gonna put that in dealer D. And then for the, for the factory Z, um, since we have met already the demand for A, B, and C, then we're gonna put that 290 in dealer D, and that would total to 300. So in this case, we were able to meet the demand of the dealers as well as exhaust all the capacity of each factory. After that, we will going to we are going to determine the first um, uh, the initial uh, solution or the total um, profit that uh, this uh, this initial solution is telling us. So we have one hundred fifty times two. 130 times 2, 30 times 2, 90 times 4, 10 times 3, and then 290 times 0 equals $1,010. So that is the initial return for this particular solution. Now we are going to see if the, this solution is the optimal solution. But before that, we have to determine first if this table is non-degenerate or degenerate uh, model. So to check whether it is degenerate or non-degenerate, we are going to use or we are going to determine the number of source and the number of um, destination. So our source would be the factory that would be X, Y, and Z. So total source would be three. And then um, the total uh, destination, the destination that we have here is the dealer A, B, C, D. So total destination would be four. 
And also, we have to determine the number of occupied cells. In this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 occupied cells. So to determine whether it, whether it is degenerate or non-degenerate, we are going to add the sources and destination and then subtract 1. So 3 plus 4 equals 7 minus 6, I mean minus 1 equals 6. So since the result is equal to the occupied cells, then that means this is a non-degenerate model. That means we don't need to assume a zero unit cell and we can just move forward with the table that we have here.